Um, there have been, you know, as you can see, uh, 157 pull requests, closed issues, and the mailing list is, uh, is pretty active. Um, so it started as a, a, a closed uh, project because for, for, for many reasons. It was a, mainly an experiment that uh, started uh, as a bit of a skunk project uh, um, in ARM. Uh, and, and of course, uh, there was an initial barrier to you know, pass through all the legal requirements uh, uh, and requests to make it properly open source. And uh, so uh, for a few years uh, it has been developed, the API has been refined, uh, and uh, uh, the business model uh, to make it uh, sustainable as an open source project was developed. That is basically our partnership with the Silicon vendors. Um, and uh, yeah, now it's completely open source uh, uh, in every part, and uh, that's the, the intention uh, and the purpose of uh, uh, our development, how we want to structure its development in the following years. And yeah, um, these are some uh, stats about uh, the developer community. It, uh, it is quite spread across the world. Um, actually, it's incredibly popular in Japan. In Japan, is just huge. <laughs> we had basically to uh, have an application engineer just there to handle all the events. That they are uh, they are extremely um, passionate about robotics, for example, and that's probably one of the reasons why it's so big in Japan. And uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's very friendly in the sense that uh, uh, you can see from the graph. Uh, usually, we get more answers uh, uh, than than questions. Uh, typically, a question receives more than an answer. Seventy-five percent of uh, the question receive uh, uh, an answer. Um, so yeah, uh, th there is still uh, a minority of question <coughs> that sometimes it's not well, it's not clear enough or is not well presented and so 25 still uh, fail to receive a proper answer. But yeah, we, we are trying also to um, help the community and with the tools uh, to better collaborate and, uh, and we look at these stats and we try to, to improve uh, uh, these. Uh, and also the, the core development team uh, uh, participate and, uh, and we do personally answer many of the questions. Um, the, the other uh, big area of uh, development uh, during uh, the, the past year has been uh, also open sourcing the hardware design. Uh, uh, and uh, not only the hardware design, but also, for example, the firmware uh, that um, runs uh, on the interface uh, chip uh, of a typical development board. And uh, this firmware contains, for example, all the secret sources uh, for debugging uh, uh, your target mic controller. Uh, and uh, not only that, but we also open sourced uh, a host PC side project. Uh, that interface uh, to this uh, open USB standard um, for, for debugging. Um, and all of that is released under the Apache license for, uh, what, um, for the software and um, typical open hardware licenses uh, for, uh, for the hardware. So the idea is uh, that um, uh, you, you can start uh, you know, uh, taking an um, embed development board, um, start prototyping your project, uh, and, um, and then you can basically take uh, all the schematics that are free and open and, and basically design uh, your, own, uh, your own product, uh, putting on the PCB the different components and everything is guaranteed uh, to work if you respect the, the initial design. And, uh, and, um, we made care of um, uh, using uh, the USB HID interface, so when you plug an embed, uh, it just enumerates as a HID device. You can just uh, start uh, poking your mic controller with, uh, with Python, just uh, importing uh, USB libraries, and of course, uh, uh, you can reuse our project uh, that uh, and give uh, higher level functionalities. Here you just see an example of uh, halting the mic controller, single stepping and uh, reading uh, the uh, program counter. Um, and yeah, and we actually are interested in uh, evolving also the um, uh, 
the software that runs on the interface for adding things in the future like uh, for example, in the design, we could um, uh, have a standardized interface uh, for reading uh, the voltage drop on a shunt res resistor for uh, measuring power consumption. These are some of the ideas that uh, we are considering. Yeah, and now I, I, I pass uh, uh, the talk uh, to my colleague, Ogden. Does it uh, work your microphone? Or? I don't know. <laughs> Seems That's to work, okay. yeah. <laughs>
price per C and uh, very simple application for the serial. Uh, on the bottom side, you have uh, the results of compiling these uh, example programs for various microcontrollers and various tool chains. The first number is rest consumption and uh, the second number is RAM consumption in bytes. So as you can see, there are quite a lot in all the cases. And how does this all tie together? I was planning to talk about that, but since we have an internet connection here, I think it's much easier to show you directly how it works. So I'm going to use a workspace from my colleague's account. So this is the Android.org site. Oh, uh, sorry, website. You can create an account here, you log in, and then you select the online compiler. And this is the online compiler. You have here your workspace uh, where you keep your various projects. This is of course where you write your code. You can compile it online. I said you can compile it online. Let's try it again. Sorry? Ah, it's okay, okay. Uh, of course you can shoot your compiler target from here. So, as you can see on the bottom side, we have quite a few targets. After the compiler, you get a binary file, this thing here, that is, that is downloaded to your local machine. And when your computer is ready, you're going to have a new uh, drive on your computer. You just copy the binary there, you reset the board, and you have your new firmware on the board, which is very convenient. And now let's come back a bit to the situation that we talked about earlier. So let's suppose that you want to add a temperature sensor to the board. So you just edit physically, you make all the connections, and then you go again to have that door. Of course, this is the browser. So you get to the embed that door side, but this time you go to components. And in the components tab, you are going to find drivers for lots and lots of components. We still haven't categorized all of them, so there are actually more that you can see here. And let's look at temperature. We choose our temperature sensor, this one. And you are taking to a page where you have generally two things. One thing is a library that I want to import in my uh, online compiler right now. And if you want to know how to use, how to actually use the library, you actually have a small demo program to show you the API. But right now I just want to use this component in my program. So I click on the library. And I click on the online compiler. And I'm going to import it here in this project. And I can see it right here in my project. And uh, another very nice feature is that you can have the documentation directly in the same window, uh, in the same browser window. You just select license and you can see the main API. And starting from there, you can very simply add your own code. And uh, the other thing here, sorry, I completely forgot about that, is that if you want to work offline for some reason, you don't have an internet connection, or you just like to work offline, you can do it very easily. Let me show you a complete list of exports. Here, I just selected my target. Now I right click and I choose export program. And as you can see, you can export it to quite a few offline uh, IDs, or if you can, uh, if you rather use the common line, you can select one of these guys, and then you get a project with a make file, you just go on your common line and do a mail. So it's very easy. Yeah, so <laughs> this is how you do it offline. You get a zip file, you are zip it, you hit make, that's all there is to it. And now, if you want, if you are wondering how hard it is to port the SDK to your actual microcontroller, 
question from that height. I've um, debated here a few of the main directories and uh, the main structure that you need to use. So first of all, you're going to want to implement the same system there, uh, some start type code, the linker command file. Then on this side, on the right side, you have a typical directory tree of a part that, as you can see, it implements driver for various peripherals, such as uh, GPIO, CDR, SPI ports. And you need to define the internal structures of um, your own microcontroller in a few header files, and then you can just start to implement drivers one by one, GPIO, CDR, as you grow. I'm not going to go into details because there are a lot of examples, there are already a lot of codes, you have a lot of basic code that you can use as a reference if you want. And uh, there is a very nice tutorial on the subject on the embed site itself. So now we're going to move a bit to our roadmap and what we are to do in the future. So the first thing is that we realized you have this very nice box of goodies, right? The components, peripherals, APIs, and so on. And not everybody is very thrilled about writing code in C or C++. So one of the efforts that we are currently undergoing is to make this code usable from various high-level languages. We are targeting Lua, JavaScript, Python, Java, and others are coming probably. Uh, this is an undergoing effort we just started, but it, it's a very exciting one. And um, for me at least, that I am actually the owner of Ibrua, the little box over there. Uh, it is very interesting because I am actually interested in writing this kind of uh, high-level languages for microcontrollers. And by using this Emmet SDK, I can actually focus on this task, on the language itself. I don't need to worry about making it run on a large number of targets and writing peripheral drivers and so on, because they are already there. And this is a very good thing. And now, I'm going to invite my colleague back to talk to you about some of the development plans. I'm going to just uh, quickly present uh, some of the other areas uh, the team will uh, work on. Um, in the August of the past year, we uh, acquired Alan for the company Sensu, uh, that specialized uh, in uh, 6 to 10 and uh, 15 to 4 radios for the internet of things. And uh, one of the things that uh, we will focus on will be on uh, making all these technologies uh, easy, available uh, on the platform. Um, so, Another area that uh, we thought that is going to be extremely important uh, for the success of the platform is uh, building a test infrastructure that uh, we have really had in, uh, in our offices. But what we want now to do is uh, exposing it as a service uh, and to all the embedded community and embedded tool. Um, so this uh, will allow uh, the like test and unit test and continuous integration. Um, to be the standard process uh, for, for our community without having to own all the devices, uh, etc. And uh, one of the other focus will be, uh, in general, uh, uh, making uh, IoT a reality in the sense that uh, we are expecting uh, in the following years uh, uh, to get uh, a huge amount of uh, new projects uh, and new products uh, from many different people that have uh, ideas about how to solve uh, uh, a problem, uh, a real problem in the world for, for uh, other people. And, um, and we want the best platform to be uh, the best uh, platform for, to make this a reality. So um, we uh, are going to, uh, in, at the end of this month, uh, we will release the first uh, Bluetooth uh, APIs, Bluetooth Smart for Energy. Um, like I said, we are working on uh, the 15 of four radios. We already have a uh, good uh, uh, several PG libraries and platforms. Uh, we have a good uh, Wi-Fi solutions, uh, good internet solutions. Really. And, um, and there will be libraries uh, for assessing the most uh, popular protocols uh, uh, for um, uh, server-side 
uh, IoT for communicating uh, from the device to the server. So MQTT and uh, the other sensing the protocols. And the other area that uh, um, we would like to focus on is uh, uh, allow some sort of uh, uh, graduation. Uh, uh, like at, at the moment, uh, uh, there are a few tens of libraries uh, uh, that are officially supported by our team and the uh, project in the Embedded SDK. Um, and then there are about uh, 6,000 uh, uh, libraries that have been developed uh, by the community. And uh, what uh, we are uh, thinking uh, about is uh, having a sort of program like the uh, Apache Incubator uh, program to get uh, some of uh, the community library adopted in the core that is the key project. And uh, now we have uh, a bit of time for uh, a few questions. Any? Yes? You showed uh, <laughs> together an uh, online uh, building feature of uh, this SDK. So this is a question about the infrastructure. How many users can it handle and where it's hosted? It's hosted by ARC, I presume. Um, how, how big a load can it, can it handle? Uh, it, it is hosted by ARM. Um, at the moment, uh, from you know, about our initial experience, uh, it seems um, well scalable. Um, in the sense, uh, for example, uh, embedded the platforms uh, have been used uh, by several university colleagues, uh, by different uh, professors in universities, especially in the USA. And uh, during that time, we get. Uh, Uh, yeah, success and uh, increasing the user base, uh, it seems uh, promising in the sense that uh, we believe uh, we will uh, manage to scale the infrastructure. And like I said, uh, uh, the, the main, um, so the, 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 the SDK is a completely open source community driven project. Um, but uh, on the other side, there is uh, the advantage uh, that uh, our core team. Uh, uh, can commit uh, a lot of resources to it uh, because of uh, uh, the deals um, uh, that we have uh, with our silicon partners. So uh, uh, they want uh, us, uh, for example, to help them integrate the uh, controller uh, on our platform. And, that, and also ARM, uh, uh, in general, wants uh, um, to use, uh, for example, the embedded platform to make uh, its uh, internet of the solutions even more popular. Um, so it is a platform that is uh, answering to the needs uh, of many people, both in the communities and also So you, you were talking about Pi OCD. I've not heard about it, but uh, does it have support for GDP? For yes. <coughs> One of the things you can do is uh, basically instantiate uh, a GDB server or in Python uh, and then you can just uh, connect a GDB debugger. Okay. And then I've got another question. Um, did you talk about how oh, you showed that you can download this stuff and how hard would it be to add another, for example, I talked about yesterday of Twitter for embedded development and how hard would it be to add another Build output for, for for downloading stuff. Sorry, I don't so Qt Creator is Qt based, which is another build system, uh, or could be Qt based, and I would just be interested how it, it would be possible to add this as a download option. Uh, and you mean like a formula for the file, the downloaded file? Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it would be potentially possible. Uh, we are actually discussing the idea of uh, having different um, uh, outputs uh, for the build uh, and for different use cases. Uh, in general, one of uh, the rules uh, we try to respect uh, for uh, the online environment 
is taking a lot of choices in place of our users. So, like, uh, we try not to expose them to the choice of uh, what is going to be the binary output. It's going to be one, and uh, you should be sure that uh, you know you are going to just take it, drag and drop uh, in uh, the master device interface, uh, and it's going to follow your target, and it's going to work. That's the sort of experience uh, that you want to give uh, online. On the other hand, uh, our online system is uh, using uh, the same embedded SDK, same embedded scripts uh, that are in the open source project. So, um, in there, we are open to add uh, any other sort of uh, output, uh, and then you can reuse the same uh, uh, the same code base uh, for, for different projects and different use cases. If you download the project, uh, can you also download the source code? Of course. Of course, course. yes. And what license does it have? Any uh, listed in this license? Uh, we use uh, the Apache license for, uh, for all the uh, SDK uh, code base. And uh, like I said, uh, um, this project uses also uh, some software that uh, is uh, released uh, uh, by uh, consortium uh, of uh, R silicon partner and this software is released under the BSD license. So it's a mixture of BSD and Apache. All permissive. The, the, the goal is uh, really making it easy for, for people that have uh, you know, ideas about you know, wanting to solve a particular problem, uh, making it easy to prototype the product and then production with it without uh, any constraints and, and release uh, source code uh, for the first thing. Any other questions? Thinking about the debugger again, um, how is it about um, tracing options and so on? Is it supported by the project? It uh, is not yet supported by our interface. Um, the CMC stuff, the design interface. Uh, uh, but that's one of the areas that we are investigating. Basically, the uh, USB heat uh, communication was not fast enough uh, for, uh, for tracing, so we are thinking about another public interface. Uh, and that is to be yeah, one of the areas that we want to improve. Right. And uh, not only that, um, uh, that should be you know, the standard uh, uh, full pledge uh, typical tracing uh, that then requires a lot of uh, processing on the cost side to produce something sensible uh, for the final user. We are also thinking about uh, providing um, new form of tracing that are a bit of a way in between. Um, and so we could instrument, for example, or easily providing um, a tracing of entering and exiting a country, of course. Yeah, but anyway, it's an open source project, and uh, you will see what's coming next. Uh, and uh, and you okay, accept those contributions, of course, from the end of
So <coughs> this is, uh, you know, as you can see, of course, you have uh, all uh, your API for threads, uh, and for signals. So it's quite completely simple. <laughs> and the USA OS is ESD. The OS is uh, the core implementation underneath is uh, BSD, and uh, the work we did on top of that is uh, Apache. Okay. Right, thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, well, uh, if I understood, you can run your software into big simulations of that. You don't need to have so the, the question is uh, if uh, we have a, a simulator for our platform, uh, not yet is the answer, in the sense uh, at the moment uh, the, the idea is uh, to target uh, directly your app. Like I said, it's, uh, it's pretty expensive, it's about the uh, most affordable uh, platform, and that platform costs uh, eight pounds. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so far uh, uh, we prefer the, the target, uh, but uh, at 